Happy Halloween, everybody. Today on Command Combat Battle Reports, we are going to celebrate Halloween with a game of Medieval. Yeah, it's a little bit different from our regular battle reports, but we figured this would be kind of appropriate for, uh, you know, a Halloween special. So, this is going to be the game. We start off here in this castle. Uh, you know that phrase, have fun storming the castle? Well, we start in the castle, storming out of it. And what these little guys have to do is they have to get out of the castle, fight their way through all these skeletons, get this drawbridge down, and then they go out into the wild black yonder. And they're looking for the Necromicon. Ooh, it's out there somewhere. And once they have the Necromicon, they have to fight their way back, including against other players. These are the, uh, the, the, the guys, and they have, each have three lives. And they uh, each have so many cards. So... This is them. They're going to have to fight their way out and get the Necromicon and get back to the castle. Whoever does that first wins the game. Evil Kitty is watching over the different pieces. What is he going to do? Oh, he's gone. So, we are a couple of turns in. The green player ran out first and he managed to kill a couple skeletons on the way and the orange and uh, yellow have gotten out. The yellow need a little bit of help. He actually spent a skeleton to uh, survive. You can, once you roll that I, if you have any skeletons you've killed, you can use them to raise the number. So right now, this is the score. Uh, green has two skeleton, two white skeletons to the orange, one white skeleton. The different colors are going to make a difference. Alright, so the green, green player continues to pull ahead. He has gotten to the drawbridge. He hasn't put it down yet. The orange player has no luck. He you know, has already lost a life as the skeleton came up and got him, and he so far only has uh, one skeleton while green is really racking them up. All right, so they've gotten across the drawbridge now, or at least the green and yellow have. Green got it down, he ran across. Yellow got a real good run roll and got across there. There are a couple skeletons in this inn along with one life. Uh, I don't know if that's a person. I think it's supposed to be a person in there and then you just sort of have this crowd and as your lot, you lose lives, it's individuals getting killed. So you actually have like three guys at the beginning. Uh, here's this, uh, th the orange guy just decided to stay inside the castle. He was having bad luck, and since the white skeletons get re -roll, give you re-rolls, he decided to go in and try to clean out the castle and get as many of those as possible to have re-rolls before he goes running out here. Meanwhile, uh, the, there's been a bridge that's been uh, discovered and a bunch of skeletons across the way of all different colors. Look, they're patriotic. It's red, white, and blue. da 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 all right, so a pretty interesting turn. A few more tiles came out. The filth, which nobody can move through, in an area with skeletons, and an area with lives, and had some skeletons, but some cards were played. The first one was I Ain't That Good, which means that all the rolls go down by one, including movement and fighting. So these two guys just decided to sort of back up and not fight this turn. Uh, Storm the Wall, the yellow player played Storm the Wall, which made these skeletons jump over and block off the orange guy who is now trapped in there. The orange player played short bow, which allows him to shoot skeletons from one space away, but he has to use a white skeleton to use it, and, you know, especially with the I ain't that good, he just ended up uh, coming so short that he had to use up his skeletons in order to survive. In fact, he's down one skeleton, so this might end up you, uh, being uh, kind of worthless for him. All right, so the board is continuing to expand. The marketplaces come on. Uh, there are a bunch of people in their shops and skeletons coming up. Yeah, I like onion rings. And some fries, maybe a Coke. Okay, maybe that'd be uh, zombies. No, they'd be wanting brains. Anyway, and this guy, uh, this is one skeleton, apparently taking care of one of the shops. Uh, this guy, the green one, came along in here and uh, cleared out the inn. Got the life, got the got the kill. The yellow's kind of wandering around outside. Oh yeah, and he played this all's quiet, so nobody can use skeletons to raise their rolls. But the orange guy still ran around and he's cleaning up and he's actually getting some. So here's what the score looks like. Uh, they've got, uh, a couple of them have red, the orange one still has all white cards, but he's got his short bow, so he'll be able to use those up for some good causes. Nobody can protect us, though, from the real danger. He's lurking. He's about ready to attack. I was reminded that I should be explaining the colors of the skeletons. The white skeletons are worth one point, the red are worth two points, and the blue is worth three points. That's in terms of raising, also in terms of the number of skeletons you need to win the game. If you have 20 points at any time, uh, you win the game. Or, of course, there's the Necromicon thing, as I uh, previously mentioned. Alright, so during this turn, 
you had uh, this guy, just this, the green one decided to run over here. Since they haven't figured out where the Necromicon is, you might as well just go around and start killing skeletons and collecting life points. This guy ran in here, the yellow one ran in here, and lost a life. He didn't have enough skeletons to raise. He rolled a one, and you need a four or better. Um, whereas the orange one is just, he's pretty well cleared out the castle area now. Now the, uh, one of the blue skeletons is kind of going up towards them. But everybody's moving skeletons towards themselves except for the yellow guy because... Well, he's kind of starting to run out of lives. You can kind of see here, the yellow one only has two left. Actually, the, the orange one only has two, so I guess they're tied, but he doesn't have very many. The yellow one doesn't have much in the way of skeletons right now to uh, sort of save himself. And the board continues to expand. We now have the windmill, and all the people are calling outside of it, Oh, get the monsters! And the red, white, and blue patriotic monsters are inside, going, No, oh, we're patriots! Uh, the yellow player has gone inside of, what is it, the marketplace, and is just scooping up the lives. Skeletons are kind of walking away from that, and uh, the green player is running towards this bridge where the skeletons are going across. And the orange player has player pretty well cleared out that whole area, but has... Uh, a bunch of uh, patriotic uh, skeletons coming after them. So here's what the score looks like at this moment. Uh, the green and yellow player have plenty of lives. The orange player is down to two. He's kind of in trouble, but he has a lot of white skeletons, so he can use those for lives. I forgot to mention that the green player is going to have to miss his turn because the yellow player played Buckethead on him, so he's got a bucka on his head. He can't move at the moment. He's stumbling around that drawbridge. Maybe he'll fall in the water. Have some luck. Well, a good turn for yellow and a heartbreaking turn for orange. Well, let's start with green. Of course, he had the bucket head and he was stumbling around, so he didn't have a turn. Yellow ran around, got all these lives, and kicked some skeleton butt, and so he uh, managed to... Oh, although he had to actually spend a few lives to get it. That's true, and some skeletons, so actually it wasn't a good turn for him either. But the orange is the real heartbreaking story. He... When uh, he basically, you can see, he doesn't have any skeletons anymore. He had to use them all. He kept rolling really, really poorly to kill uh, skeletons, and so he had to use the skeletons he had earned in order to kill them, and even lost a life to do a reroll, but he just kept rolling ones, lost all of his skeletons, and just wound up with the one that he had killed, and now he's got two there with only one life left. So he is in trouble. Meanwhile, the church has come out, and we have a bunch of lives in there while the skeletons are trying to break in. And a uh, little bit of movement, not very much, on the part of the skeletons. Alright, so not a lot of changes with green and yellow. Green just kind of started fighting his way across that bridge. Yellow has gotten all of his lives and started using his crossbow. Actually, I forgot to mention, actually, that he has a crossbow, which he's able to use. Uh, red. It's very much like the um, orange player's regular bow, only he uses red, and he's able to shoot further and harder and stronger and all that. But he only had one thing that he could do this turn, so he just killed one uh, skeleton. Um, green, like I said, was just moving his way across there. Now, the interesting thing was with orange. You may notice he kind of changed looks a little bit. That's because he used these. He's one of them and was able to exchange places with any skeleton on the board. So he went from there to there into the church and switched places with the red, which he needed to do because he's down to one life now. And look at all those lives in there. He's going to try to gather them all up. All right, done with this turn. It kind of went similar to the last one. Yellow just ruled, but it was barely able to move around, but he is able to move into this uh, space and still has a couple skeletons to contend with. Green has just been going along with his luck, uh, continuing along with his luck. He just cleared all these skeletons out and ran up, and he's about to rescue these couple people. Help us, help us, I'll here rescue you. And speaking of rescue, the orange player, who was in really bad shape, has now killed the one skeleton that was on him, raced around, rescued all the people, and went and killed the blue skeleton. Went, come on, guys, let's get out of the church and kill the blue skeleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's about it for this not a huge amount uh, took place now, except for the uh, the pit has come out and people can fall into that. Uh, there's a, a new space over here. Orange just kind of strolled up to that door. He's feeling all macho. Yellow uh, finished off this area and he got himself a mace for having killed the uh, blue skeleton there. He played a card and he now has a mace, which gives him a plus one all the time, so he's kicking some butt. Green uh, moved around, got uh, those lives and the skeletons are coming up to him. And he got this plate on him. You stay there. So he is trapped inside that house for the next turn. Well, it's pretty amazing that the game has gone on this long and the graveyard hasn't been pulled. The graveyard is actually where the Necromicon is. So all these guys are looking around and can't seem to find that uh, graveyard Necromicon. But Green was, of course, trapped inside. So he couldn't come out. And he's about to win the game. So if he gets those two blues, 
he probably will have a big enough score that he's going to win the game. Yellow is running. Had to, he was sort of trapped back here because he can't go through the building, so he's running around to try to get back into this game. Orange, meanwhile, slipped by one of the uh, red skeletons, is getting some lives, and he's actually getting filled back in. He used his bow to get rid of a red skeleton, so he's actually starting to get back into this game and survive. Well, the graveyard finally came out, which is interesting because we really did shuffle all of these and the graveyard can come out at any time, even at the beginning. You just shuffle it anywhere into the deck and it just happened to be the second to last card to come out. We still have one more placement to go, but uh, yeah, it's the last, second to last one to come out. Here it is, all the black skeletons. They move at two spaces a turn. You have to roll a six to kill them or, you know, add up to that. Uh, and it came out at the orange player's turn, and he had to take care of a skeleton. It his bad luck continues. He had to roll twice, lost two lives to get rid of it, but now he gained one more. The yellow player is wanting to catch up with the green player. Oh, the green player, by the way, he did take out those two skeletons, but we found out it's 30 points to, uh, get to, the, uh, to uh, win the game, not 20. So he's up there. He's past 20 now, and he might actually win this just killing skeletons. It looks like that's what he's trying to do. Um, the yellow player, meanwhile, is trying to catch up with him, and so he played this card, just a flesh wound, which brings out a whole bunch of skeletons. He rolled, or he, uh, he just brought out, uh, not rolled, but he brought out a whole bunch of skeletons and put them right in front of himself, and he's fighting his way through them. They're the red skeletons. All right, so what we have going on here is a competition between green and uh, yellow. See who, how, who can kill the most. It, it's sort of like uh, Legolas and Gimli's uh, competition in Lord of the Rings, each one trying to have the most number of kills. Green is just chopping his way through the reds there. Yellow chopped his way through his yellow, red skeletons and is now going after these, and they're both trying to get their skeletons to come after them. Meanwhile, the orange player is scooping up uh, uh, lives and waiting until the, he can you know, empty out the graveyard, but he just has no luck. He rolled a one, and so that means only one of them moved. They do move two spaces a turn, but it's, they're slowly emptying out. Oh, and the last space was put in. That's the tavern right there. Okay, it's getting nasty between Legolas and Gimli here. Uh, they're, they're each wiping out the, the, the skeletons, but the, uh, for once, the green player had some really bad luck. He kept rolling ones and twos, and instead of losing his skeletons, to, you know, which would lose points, he kept losing lives, and now he is down to one point. But it's a heck of a lot of skeletons. We're going to have to count there, see if he might have even won by this point. The yellow player, meanwhile, ran up to here, killed one with his mace, and then used, uh, oh, used his pole arm to kill the next skeleton right next to him. But the reason it was really nasty was because Green played this yoink card, which means he got to take four points worth of skeletons from the, the um, from any player, and so he took them from yellow player, he took red skeletons, which are very valuable to him, and uh, got more there. So it was kind of nasty with that. Orange player, meanwhile, ran up to here, and he's trying to move those uh, black skeletons out of there and get them out of the way so he can run in there and get the Necromicon, which is right in there. Okay, quite an interesting turn here. The green player was in the stables, and appropriately enough, got a horse, got his life, started racing out there. The yellow player started coming over this way, and the green player was trying to get these skeletons to kind of come after him. The yellow player was trying to get these skeletons to come after him. And the orange player was over here. He uh, was actually on the space as a skeleton. One of the other players put the skeleton on him, and he was going to have to fight one of these nasty black ones. But then he played Ashes to Ashes, which puts everybody in the graveyard. So he put himself in the center uh, grave, and the other two went by the entrance, because even when you kill the black ones, they don't count towards points, and they're going after the points. So the orange guy got the Necromicon, which he has now, and he is running for it. He's trying to get out of there. The green one has a horse, though, so he's probably going to be running him down. So it's a real scramble here. The green player ran out there and attacked the orange player. Once you have the Necromicon, people can attack you, but you cannot attack them. Uh, but the orange player rolled a 6 and the green player rolled a 1. I guess their luck uh, completely reversed this time because the green could not have had worse luck and the orange could not have had better luck. And so the green took a loss uh, and sort of let him go, didn't try to add any skeletons to it. Um, yellow then used the lost card which, no, it didn't have this bizarre ending, although maybe it will have uh, have it, and sent the orange player back here and put a skeleton on, a black skeleton on top of him. The orange player then proceeded to roll a six, a second six, so I guess he was saving all of his luck for now, then rolled a five for his movement, and whoosh, he's running out there. So it looks like the orange player is, gonna get a, or is running to get away, but he has to go all that way back to the castle, so it's going to be a trick. 
Well, the green player took out another. In fact, he's only two points away. We added up, and he's only two points away from winning. And so, the yellow player played We Can Take Them, which pulled the green player into the graveyard. He might have been holding that on onto that to try to bring the orange player back, but he has to stop the green player from winning right away. Uh, and so, uh, he's back there, and all the black skeletons are in there. And remember, the black skeletons do not count for any points. Uh, no, it's not a race thing. It's just uh, the way that they turned out. The, 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 in this case, this black is evil because black is night and scary. Ooh, and they're all in the graveyard trapped together. While the orange guy is running away, trying to get down there as quick as possible. If he can make it to this, then he automatically jumps here. This is uh, an altar which takes you right to the doorstep of the castle, but he'll still have to fight the three guards. I forgot to mention the uh, peasant uprising, which allowed some of these uh, the uh, life tokens to fight back. And this guy killed a skeleton. The skeleton killed the guy in the end. All right. So the green and the yellow uh, tried to scramble out of there, but the orange player went running and sent the black uh, skeletons onto them, jumped onto them, and then did a really nasty move. He played all quiet, which means that they cannot use skeletons to survive. So they are actually going to have to roll natural sixes. They're going to have to sit there and just roll until they get sixes, which is pretty nasty maneuver. Uh, something was just pointed out to me that's very interesting. Um, this really screws the, the uh, green player over, who was the leader. He was about to win, but uh, since he won't be able to use any skeletons, he has to actually use lives uh, when he's going to get hit, and he only has one left. And he just gave away this uh, Nevermind card, which could have stopped this card, but he had just given it away thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to have any use for that anyway, so guess you're screwed. Okay, very interesting turn. As you may recall, the green and yellow player were here, and each had black skeletons on them, and the orange player was running away, and they had this all's quiet, so they could not use uh, skeletons to raise their rolls. Well, the green player uh, used He's one of them on the orange player, which brought him back and put him onto the green player's space and punched him in the nose, and they had a fight, uh, but the orange player won. Now, the green player could have used one of his many, many, many skeletons to raise the roll, but, of course, all's quiet didn't allow him to, and so he had to use a, lose a life, and he had one left, and so he is dead. Uh, killed by the orange player, of all people. The worst luck player beat the uh, best luck player. The yellow player, meanwhile... Uh, had a really tough situation. He had the, the black skeleton on him. He rolled a six. He didn't even have to use skeletons on He Well, he wouldn't have been able to. Literally on the first roll, he rolled a six. Got super, super lucky. And then he rolled a one on his movement. He could only move one space, and so he went on to the uh, orange player's turn and tried to fight him, and they both rolled fives. And so they were equal, and neither could raise the number. So uh, the orange player got away, and he ran down here, ran five spaces, managed to roll a five to get away, was is getting away from the other guys, and then he played, how many did you say there were? Which brought out a whole bunch of skeletons and put them all around the yellow player. All right, pretty interesting here. The yellow player just started cutting his way through skeletons, just eating them away, going through all of them. He's like, screw this, I'm not even going to try anymore. I'm just going to go after getting the most number of skeletons. And he tried to put this black one in the way, so now Orange's path is blocked by, uh, you know, black skeletons. He also used bucket head, so Orange is sitting there stumbling away on, you know, with the bucket on his head. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, he's going through and, you know, cutting through those. He used up his lives rather than skeletons. He could use the skeletons now, but he's like, screw it. Uh, he had five, he's now down to two, but he has 18 points, so who will get more, or who will who will win? Will the yellow player get to 30 first, or will the orange player get the Necromicon back to the castle first? So the orange player continues to run, the, uh, he moved one of the black skeletons out of the way, the yellow player was chopping through here, completely cleared out the space, used a lot of lives to do it, but is getting, you know, racking up them points, but then the orange player played to the pit! So the yellow player is now inside the pit. The yellow player had to stay in the pit for the turn, still tried to move the, the black skeletons in the way. The orange player rolled higher and the black skeletons are starting to kind of move away uh, regardless. So the yellow is moving forward, chopping through these guys. He is down to one life, but he has 20, like 22, 23 points, something like that. Uh, let's see, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23 points. Plus this next one coming up is he's going to be at 25 and one life. Can he do it before Orange can get there? Well, Orange just went ahead and accepted that he's going to have to fight, so he stepped forward. Fought the black one, rolled a five, so he only had to sacrifice one white skeleton to get through, and now he is on his way to the shrine, which will put him right in front of the castle. My money's on orange. So the game came to a very interesting conclusion. Orange was just about to get to the shrine. You would think he got here and then had to fight the skeletons to get back, but no, yellow played we can take them, which brought orange over to him, and so he had to fight him just like he did the green, and they went into hand-to-hand, -in -hand, fought, and just like green, Yellow had only had one life left, and Orange won and took him out. He was close to the number of skeletons, but he had the Necromicon, and now he could just sort of stroll on back, moving the skeletons away, and get into that castle. So, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Command Combat Battle Reports. I know this is a little bit unusual, because it's not exactly your regular kind of battle, uh, nor was it a regular kind of battle report, but... Hey, it's Halloween, so, you know, we had to bring out the spooks tonight. So, uh, happy Halloween, everybody. Hope you all had a good time, and uh, happy gaming, everybody.